Hey everybody, today we're gonna take a deep dive on what I think is a really cool room mic technique. This is something I did back in 2016 on a live stream, but it's such an effective technique that I thought it was a good time to do an update. And what that technique is, is a microphone in this front kit position, measured the same distance from the snare as the overheads, but facing away from the drum set. So it's not gonna get any direct sound from the kit. It's gonna get everything coming back at the mic from the room. This is a great way to open up your drum sound or add some depth to your drum sound. The good news is you don't have to have a large, nice room like this to get a lot out of this mic. This is something I used to do in the old studio as well, which was really small. And you can definitely add a little bit of size and depth to your drum sound, even in a small room. And we're gonna demonstrate that today. Also going to use three different mics or three different mic types just to show you some different flavors. First up is the venerable SM57. We're gonna use a Roswell Pro Audio Mini K87 and an Audio-Technica AT4050 stereo. Each mic is gonna bring its own flavor to our drum sound. We're gonna hear these in solo, we're gonna hear them with the kit, we're gonna hear them with some compression, and we're gonna hear them in context. And to help me demonstrate today, I'm joined by a few drumming buddies, Michael Southcombe and Dan Hegarty. So let's go have a listen. To take this one step further, we also tracked each of these microphones with some compression. The SM57 is going through the Revive modded WA76. The MK87 is going through the Golden Age Comp 3A Junior. And the Stereo 4050 is going through a pair of Golden Age Comp 54s. So let's take a listen to those in solo and then with the kit.
Now that you know how each of those front kit mics sound and what they add to our overall drum sound, it's time to add a little context. So I'm going to have Michael play to a short song, and for this demo, we're going to use the front kit mics with no compression. So all the close mics and just the natural front kit mics. Let's have a listen. Okay, I went three quarters of a mile down the road to my buddy Dan's place. We're at R2 Studios in NoHo, right? Mm -hmm. I've known Dan forever, all the way back to MI. We've we done a lot of cool stuff together. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be fun. This so is all his fault, by the way. <laughs> I wasn't gonna do any of this, but then, anyway, your show, you talk. <laughs> it's my fault? <laughs> yeah, okay, you know. Yeah. This could be worse. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Dan's rehearsal spot here is very typical in Los Angeles, and I'm sure probably other big cities as well. But I know in LA, this is kind of how everybody's recording that doesn't have a you know a larger space or an actual, you know, technically a real studio or whatever. Yep. So this is a really common room for people to be doing tracks in. You know, we've got the good old carpet on the walls. It's really just a box. This room is Pretty, actually, I think it is square. It is about 12 foot ceilings, which helps a little bit. But other than carpet, we're in an untreated room. It's just eight microphones and there is a kit front. So kick, one, snare, two, three toms gets us to five, overhead seven, and then we have our front kit mic out here. AKG P120. That's right, that which is a great little microphone. What we're gonna do is we're gonna turn that mic around and face it into the room that is all carpeted walls in here with a 12 foot ceiling. And we're gonna see if we can get a usable room type sound out of it to thicken the kit up a little bit and to make it sound a bit more lively. Maybe some compression, some EQ, I don't know. Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll test all that stuff out. And he's gonna play a couple patterns and then we're gonna see uh, what it sounds like. So, you ready to do this thing? Oh yeah, okay. let's do it. Perfect timing, the band stopped playing. Small rooms can be very problematic, and especially small rooms that are untreated. And Dan's room is basically a 12 by 12 by 12 box. Carpet on the walls and an untreated drywall ceiling. There's close proximity from the kit, the mic, and all of the walls. That can cause problems in the low end. They tend to be pretty boxy. Symbols can be a problem. And a lot of the times you may have to do some drastic EQing to find something that works well in context. So I would like to show you real quick what I chose to do with the front kit mic in Dan's room. Let's have a look. Let's start by taking a listen to the drum sound 
with the front kit mic, but none of the processing, just so you know exactly where we started, and then we'll get to the processing. All right, so it is adding something to the sound. There's a couple things that I like and there's some things that I don't like. What I like is what it's doing to the toms. I can hear it's adding a, some depth to the tom sound. You can kind of hear the depth of the shell a little bit more than just the attack from the close mic and what's coming from the overheads. It's doing something similar with the snare as well. So I wanna see if we can maybe pull that out a little bit more. What I don't like is what's going on with the cymbals. The, the hi-hats feel a little you know, harsh. The same thing with the crashes. So I wanna see if we can kind of flip our balance a little bit and then blend it back into the drum sound. But I do like how it is adding some depth to the kit that was not there with the close mics. So what I started with was EQ. Low cut, just cleaning up the bottom a little bit, making sure we don't have anything weird down there. This high shelf, this dip right here, this is what's pushing the cymbals and the hi-hat back a little bit. I'm trying to make room for that snare to come forward a little bit. I think that did a pretty good job. This mid dip, this 475 hertz dip here, has a huge effect around the toms. Listen to this. It cleans that area up a little bit so we get a little more clarity between the toms and the snare. Not trying to clean it up completely, just make a little room. Next up, more EQ. This darkens it up a little bit, but really my goal with this was more right around this ride section. I wanted to see if I could take a little attack off the ride and also some of the body away from the ride. And keep in mind, none of these EQ moves are meant to make this front kit mic sound good in solo. That is absolutely not the goal whatsoever. So just keep that in mind. Let's move on to some compression. This brought back some of the body of the overall kit. So the ride, the toms, everything kind of thickens back up. And I'm not hammering it, but it does give it a little bit of character as well. So let's take a listen now with that in context before we go to the last piece of this puzzle. So we've added a little thickness to the kit, mitigated the cymbals a little bit, which has made it overall a little bit on the dull side. But I do like the depth that we have now, especially with the extension of the snare drum and what this is doing to the toms. But to add some of that, a little bit of sense of space back to it and give it a little bit of life that is gone because some of the high cuts, 
I'm sending this over to a very short reverb, and I chose for this demonstration to use all stock Logic plugins. You can go to town with your favorite reverbs, compressors, and EQs. I'm keeping it simple for this. And let's take a listen to just the reverb. <laughs> Now we have a mono source, but some of these short like room sounds do a nice job of just spreading things out a little bit. Obviously it's not a left and right, it's not going to be, but what does this sound like with our front kit mic? So this is really helping to add uh, some overall space, kind of open things up a little bit. So what does all this sound like in context? Let's have a listen. I really think this helps add some overall depth to the kit and it gives it a little bit more of a sense of space. Not a big room sound, you know, not trying to make it sound like we're at East West or anything like that. I wanted it to add depth to the kit and just an overall sense of space so it didn't sound like it's recorded in this really small room. And I think this does a pretty good job. Now these are just starting points. So if any of this works for you, I highly recommend just playing around with the plugins or hardware or whatever it is you choose to use to try to augment your sound the way that you want it. But I guarantee you, if you spend a little time with the front kit mic, even in a small room, you can get a pretty good sound out of that and really help your drum sound. So thank you all for joining me for this. Thanks to Michael and Dan, those guys rock. And we will see y'all in the next video. Happy recording.